Hi all, welcome to ESI Cloud Trainings. My name is Shalini Nerala. Let's get started with Telvumi Atomsphere Basic Training Day 14 session. So, so far we've discussed about the basic concepts. So, we'll now discuss about the advanced concepts called web services. So, let's throw some light on what web services are. This is for people who are new to the concept of web services. So, in order to understand the further topics, one should be very clear with this. Right? So, let's start. What web services are? They are nothing but the services available over the web. They enable communication between applications over the web. They provide a standard protocol or format for communication. Using web services, two different applications can talk to each other and exchange data or information. Right? Say for example, you have an application built with Java on a Linux platform and it is using Oracle database as its backend. And there is one more application built on C++ over Windows platform and it is using MySQL database. And now if these two applications have to communicate with each other over the internet, then the web services makes it possible. With the help of web services, they'll be able to communicate with each other. Right? And now that we got to know that web services are the services available over the web, there should be someone providing the services, right? So they are nothing but the service providers. The service provider or the server is the entity that develops or implements the application and makes it available over the internet. Clear? So now since we have the provider, we now need to have someone to consume it, right? So that is called service consumer or client. The client sends the request to the server and the server or the service provider processes that request and sends the response back to the client. This is how the communication takes place. And in order to enable the communication, we need to have two things. They are the medium and the format. For example, consider a phone call. Here, in order to enable the communication, we'll need phone, which is the medium, and the language that is understood by both the callers, which is the format. So for the web services to communicate to each other, they will need HTTP or internet as medium and the language XML or JSON as the format. Now the next question will be how these web services are implemented. So they are implemented in two ways. One is SOAP, which is simple object access protocol and REST, which is representational state transfer. So in SOAP, it allows HTTP only post operation, post method only it supports and the format it supports only XML. Clear? Whereas coming to REST, it supports HTTP all options like post, get, delete, type, all these different types it allows and format XML, JSON, text, anything it accepts. So now you can see that REST is more flexible and less rigid. Clear? So let's now discuss more about SOAP web service. Okay. So what is a SOAP web service? A web service that follows some guidelines led by SOAP web services specification is called a SOAP web service. Now you might get a doubt. What are these guidelines and who defines them? Right. So there is an international body that develops open standards for worldwide web called W3C worldwide web consortium. So and what are these rules? They are the SOAP web service specifications, which are of two types, basic and extended. So these extended are used for enterprise level. Under basic, we have SOAP, WSDL and UDDI. We'll discuss more about all these three. So let's start with SOAP web service. So what are SOAP web services? They are the protocols or rules on, uh, that defines how two applications will talk to each other over the web. All the information or message exchange happens over a common format called XML. These XML messages will have a defined structure called SOAP message. The SOAP message consists of envelope, header and body. So the envelope acts as a wrapper around the request or response. And the header, it contains application specific information like the authentication, payment, etc. And coming to the body, it contains the actual message that is intended for the endpoint. Clear? Yeah? And the attachments, the payload for the SOAP message often includes a word processing or a PDF document. 
an image or another binary file attachment using multi-purpose internet mail extensions. So every SOAP message have to follow this particular structure and it is one of the specification. Clear? Then, then comes the VSTEL. So now if you are a service consumer and you want to make use of a web service, then you need to know all the details about the web service, right? So you need to know what does that web service do, how to consume it, what are the parameter it accepts, what are the return types, etc. So in order to make all this clear, every service provider publishes a description about his web services. And this will act as an interface to the web service where all the attributes and functionalities of that web service are described. This is an XML based interface called Visital web services description language. This can be interpreted with some tools that can display the attributes and functionalities of the web service and it generates request and response for you. The most used tool is called SOAP UI. So the Visital acts as an interface for the web service and the service provider creates this interface for his web service and the service consumer can get the Visital and understand the request and response parameters. Clear? Now you might get a doubt how the consumer gets to know about that whistle. So there are two ways which, which they can get to know. If the server and client know each other, they can directly exchange the whistle with each other. If the server and client doesn't know each other, then the web service provider publishes his web service on an online directory from where the consumers can query and search for the web service. This online registry or directory is called UDDI, Universal Description, Discovery and Integration. It is an online directory where the provider can publish the visitor and consumer can query and get hold of the visitor and use it to call the web service. So these are the different specifications led by the international body called SOAP specifications. So all those web services that follow these specifications is called a SOAP web service. This is clear. Now we learn about REST web service. So a web service that communicates between two applications using the principles of REST architecture is called a REST web service. Clear? You might get a doubt now what is REST and what are these rules that should define or to become a RESTful web service, right? So REST stands for Representational State Transfer. It is an architectural style. Unlike SOAP, REST is not a protocol. There are no strict specifications. There is no central body that is controlling the specifications. REST is a design principle. You can use these principles or design methods to create a service. And when we use these principles while designing the web services, we get RESTful web services. Right now we'll discuss about the principles. So these are the five principles that are available. The first and foremost comes the uniform interface. Under that we have identification of resources. So each resource has a URI and is accessed through a defined set of HTTP methods. And then comes manipulation of resources using representations. Each resource can have one or more representations such as application by XML, application by JSON, text by HTML, etc. Clients and servers decide to select the representation. And then comes the select descriptive message. The request and response contain not only the data but additional headers describing how the content should be handled. Say for example, response should be cached or no, request must be authenticated or no, etc. And the second principle is stateless. The server should not require to store the state of the session. Each request from the client to the server must contain all of the data that is necessary to handle the request. No need of storing any state on the server. This makes every request from client independent and complete in itself. Say for example in Flipkart, the cart information is stored in client side but not on the server side. Only that information that is ready for payment will be sent to the server, right? And third principle is caching. So this defines how the client and server will communicate. The data within a response to a request must be implicitly or explicitly labeled as cacheable or non-cacheable. 
server generates responses that indicates whether